Hi everyone, Armored Pants here, and I have another advanced blitz tutorial for you. Uh, this is number six in the series, and this one is on maneuverability. Um, with these tutorials, we try to take beyond the norm what you normally see in the videos on channel and on other YouTubers. Try to learn something new, look at the game from a different perspective, try to basically um, enhance how you view the game and become a better player. Now, we're going to have a look at maneuverability today and we're going to have a look at a new maneuverability formula, uh, what we're going to call the M formula. But this is just a tool, right? Um, it, uh, it's something to incorporate into your overall play and help you with decision making, but it's not all encompassing, it's not the be all and end all, it is just a tool. So let's look at it in that respect. So um, let's have a look at this formula, how we're going to create it, right? Um, and let's talk about maneuverability, right? So maneuverability is one of the key aspects of the game. Um, it's something which is going to be able uh, to influence your entire gameplay. Uh, it dictates a lot of your abilities in the game. It, it, it dictates your ability to get around the map, to achieve strategic positions, to attack, to brawl, to get up those difficult terrain like hills, and of course, should it warrant it, to run away. Um, and you know, therefore, you know, along with the gun system, damage per minute, um, um, accuracy, dispersion, all those things, it's very important. Um, but arguably, it's maybe even more important because getting around the map influences your ability to uh, be um, um, more influential within the game, right? Um, now, there's quite a few factors that we need to take into account uh, looking at maneuverability. It's not just your top speed. In fact, that can often be misleading. If you look at the top speed and say, okay, it's high, therefore um, this is a maneuverable tank, that may not necessarily be the case. So several other factors determine your maneuverability, and let's have a look at those. So what else, you know, let's say we look at blitzhanger.com or we're looking at the tank specifications in game. What else should we consider? What is going to determine the maneuverability of the tank I am playing, right? So firstly, power to weight ratio, right? That basically tells you how fast the tank is going to accelerate. Traverse speed, now not the turret traverse, but the traverse speed of a tank, which is basically different to the turret traverse speed. Um, and also tank type. Now, uh, we expect, for example, a light tank to be far more maneuverable than a heavy tank, right? And uh, that we know. Of these three, we can probably set aside the tank type, right? Because we know what tank we're playing and uh, what the characteristics should be. But probably the power to weight ratio and the traverse speed are key. And they should form the part of any formula that we would create to determine the overall maneuverability of a tank. Now, those of you who have watched the um, uh, advanced tutorial on gun handling will know that we created this G index. So let's have a think, could we do something similar here? So we've got top speed, we've got power to weight ratio, we've got traverse speed, which is measured in degrees. And we're gonna have a think about how we can, um, you know, create a formula that will enable us to look at this and compare tanks on a one-to-one, -one, like for like basis. We want to have maybe perhaps a um, Newton moment, so apple on the head. Um, and the key question is how we combine all these things. And to continue with the apple analogy, maybe even we want to be like William Tell. We want to make sure that we are right on target, making sure that we create a formula which is useful and can be used for any tank um, and used by any player to compare uh, different tanks on a one-to-one -one basis. So the answer is um, going to be uh, probably not obvious. But I think, you know, we were very successful with the G-Index. I think that we've proven that it works. So let's see if we can find an answer here. If we can create a simple figure, one number, that allows us to compare tanks and their maneuverability vis-a-vis -vis each other and um, in the game in general. So let's keep it simple, right? So um, we don't want to make an overly complex formula because then it's useless, right? Only those with maths degrees or whatever be able to use it. So we want to make something pretty simple that can be used by any blitzer who just has the basic mathematic mathematic ability to multiply or divide things. So let's take the um, key components. So top speed, we'll designate that S. Part of weight ratio, we'll designate that P. And traverse, we shall designate that T, right? Pretty simple, right? So we've got S, P, and T. Top speed, power to weight ratio, and traverse. And they are going to be our um, um, components of our formula. 
Now we know there's a connection between top speed and power to weight ratio. So let's uh, utilize that as the uh, starting point. Let's get a bottle involved. Is it Isaac Newton? Ah, that's only Einstein. We're gonna have to stick with Einstein, guys. We'll have to make deal with this guy. Um, it's not gonna be E equals MC squared, by the way. It's a little less uh, complicated. It's basically S by P. It's gonna be speed by power to weight ratio. And then the next component is T. What do we do with T? Well, in order to make it manageable, let's get the square root of T. Uh, the traverse um, and therefore the lower the traverse the less um, high the number is going to be the lower number is going to be so we get the traverse speed square root and we multiply that by the sum of s multiplied by p all right and um, pretty straightforward um, now uh, i think that this is going to work and um, we don't need to divide because these are all factors that are positive influence so let's see how this works in practice and um, so let's take some examples right to see if this actually works and makes sense let's take one of the most maneuverable tanks in blitz if not the most maneuverable the dracula dracula stats are its speed is 65 kilometers per hour right really fast part weight ratio is 41.38 excellent and traverse is excellent 63.58 put that into the formula and we get that uh a figure of over 21k right so but we'll narrow that down just to 21 to make it more manageable it's a lot easier to uh, compare let's take another example let's take the helsing now the helsing is also very fast but those of you who played it will know that it's not quite as maneuverable right so let's see that in practice now, how does that work out so helsing stats uh, 60 kilometers per hour so very fast part to weight ratio that was lower 21.29 and traverse is lower too at 39.6 but that gives us an overall score of 8.3 we'll round it up from uh, 8,200 8, whatever to 8.3 so that tells us now that the Dracula is more maneuverable than the Helsing, right? And probably those of you who've played those tanks will know that that is the case. But now we have a mathematical proof. But also, it tells us how much more maneuverable the Dracula is. And in this instance, basically, we we're comparing uh, 21.4 to 8.3. So it tells us that the Dracula is approximately two and a half times more maneuverable than the Helsing. And that may seem like a lot, but anybody who has been in a Helsing and has been circle of death um, by a Dracula will know that this is probably pretty true. The Helsing um, has notoriously poor traverse, both in terms of turret and the tank itself. So that seems to prove that our formula makes sense uh, based on actual tanks that we know. Now, um, let's have a uh, further think. Um, what can we do with this formula now that we have it? What's its use? Well, we have, um, and also maybe what should we call it? So we have the G index for gun handling, right? We know that, we have that in another video. We uh, calculated that, we, we proved that it makes sense. So let's call this the M index. Let's keep it nice and simple. The M index for maneuverability. Um, and now we have, two, we have two tools that we can use when comparing tanks like for like. Um, let's put this now uh, M formula to use, right? So. Um, let's put it into combat, let's put it through its trials, right? So let's see if it makes sense you know, with real life examples that we're gonna then look at gameplay. So firstly, you know, this is just a formula, it's not an absolute. Um, it is simply a tool um, for comparison um, and to give you, you know, a one-on-one -on -one, like for like comparison between tanks. Um, and, you know, I think this is something which gives you a simple single number that allows you to compare the maneuverability of tanks particularly if you're unfamiliar with a tank we don't want it overly complex we don't say that it touches all points in the game for example it's not taking into turret traverse speed etc so it's not all inclusive and don't ignore the other factors right we need to include those as well you know for example turret traverse speed is also important to know right and we also need to take into account the gun handling if you're talking about brawling etc this is just a simple tool though and um, that allows you to compare it's not supposed to be all an end all it is just a tool that allows players to directly compare tanks and give you an idea of how to utilize that tank better so let's take an example of two tanks a player may want to um, compare so let's say that you are um, looking at French mediums let's say you haven't played any of them or you have played one but you want to compare those tanks. You don't you don't have them in your garage or you've only got one in your garage. Now let's take one that we know is quite maneuverable. Let's take the AMX CDC. We know this is a pretty maneuverable tank, right? 
But let's say you're looking at buying this, you're also looking at buying maybe the M41A1, right? Which is also a French medium tank. And you know, let's say you uh, like light tanks um, and you're a medium tank player or whatever, and you wanna see, you know, how maneuverable are these? And this can help you make a decision as to, um, you know, which of these might suit your gameplay best. So we put in our formula, right? So it's um, top speed by power to weight ratio multiplied by traverse speed, square root of traverse speed. And for the CDC, we get a score of 16.5, 16 thousand, which we'll round down to 16.5. Do exactly the same calculation for um, the uh, M4A1 and we get 6.8, 6.79 rounded up to 6.8. So what does this tell us? Uh, the conclusions we can draw from this is that the uh, CDC is two and a half times more maneuverable than the M4A1. So if you are a player who wants a really maneuverable tank, not so much worried about armor, then you know that this is the tank for you. The Dracula also, we remember our figures here, is 30% more maneuverable. And that seems about right. The Dracula is one of the most maneuverable tanks in the game. CDC is also very maneuverable. So a 30% difference seems about right. Not a huge difference like two and a half times. So it seems that this makes sense. Now, how does the um, M, M index help us? When we look under the hood, when we see the maneuverability, well, if there's a tank you don't have, if you're buying a new tank, uh, if you want to compare tanks on a like-for-like -like basis, then this tool helps. It's a simple single number which indicates how a tank can be played. So if you're in the CDC example, you know that you can get around a map much better than you can in the M4A1, and that helps you decide how to uh, play the tank and if it suits you and you no longer have to rely on one aspect such as top speed etc which can be misleading you've got something which encompasses the main factors that influence maneuverability and if you use that along with the g index it's a perfect preparation for a new tank or changing tanks you know the uh, more you uh, prepare the better you prepare the better you play and therefore it's a useful tool in your blitz toolbox one thing i would just say by the way guys is that you need to compare like with like so uh, if you have engine accelerator for example selected on one tank you have to ex um, select it on the other tank as well right so otherwise you're not comparing like with like so just bear that in mind now um let's see the m index in action right so let's take our two tanks we're gonna have a look at some gameplay firstly for the m4a1 and then for the cdc and we'll see the difference in maneuverability the different gameplay that unfolds using each of the tanks first we're gonna look at the m4a1 and we're gonna have a look at gameplay it's a supremacy map and it is rockfield now, unlike uh, normal games, we're actually going to just focus in the gameplay on the maneuverability and highlight that. So as we're uh, waiting for the game to count down, as always, you know, uh, we will have a look at the um, setup, see how many, many medium tanks, uh, heavy tanks, light tanks, tank destroyers are on each team. Then we decide what to do. In this case, we're going to go towards C. Now, the maneuverability of the tank is key here because if you're going to get to C and to spot, you need to get there pretty quickly, right? So you can see this tank accelerates relatively well, right? It is a maneuverable tank, right? Um, um, but we will ha ha compare this to the CDC in the next game and see the difference in that maneuverability based on the index. And one of the key things to notice here at the start is that this tank is not super fast and it doesn't get into strategic positions as fast as other tanks because the ISU, which is a, albeit a relatively quick tank destroyer, uh, is still a tank destroyer, it's not a medium tank, and that is in position by the time we get into position. So you don't have that positional advantage with this tank that you would have with a faster tank, for example, like the Dracula. The Dracula would have been there far quicker than the um, M4A1. Um, and therefore have an advantage in spotting up the enemy and being able to put in some shots before the enemy arrives or while they're traversing the open ground. Now, um, you can see here also as we're going up this slight incline that this tank struggles slightly, not so much, but struggles slightly uh, when going up incline. So again, it's affecting that maneuverability. Now I'm being pushed on here on both sides, so I need to get out of there. There's a tank coming up behind me. So I decide to move. You can see I was relatively slow accelerating. Once I start going downhill, I pick up speed. Now we're in a situation where, um, you know, I got hit, I got set on fire, so I lost some hit points. And um, if I was in a faster tank, I might have been able to get out of there a bit quicker. That said, 
we you know this tank is not um, unmaneuverable, right? It does have maneuverability. It is decent, um, you know, uh, medium tank. Um, it also has that great gun, but we're talking about maneuverability here. And I was able to get out of that um, situation, get into a position which now is strategically very important and vital. Why? Well, I'm spotting up those reds, my proximity spotting all those reds. My allies are stopping and push, which is why this VK100-01P uh, comes up to uh, push me. But you can see there again how slow I was going up the hill, right? This tank loses a lot of speed when it's going uphill. Um, I'm trying to get the kill shot on him. By the way, guys, I make a big mistake here, right? So, and I knew I was in danger of making this mistake, but I wanted to get that kill. I let the frustration get the best of me. And I went outside on when I knew the enemy were over there, and I took two hits. I'm just lucky one of them bounced. And that's nothing to do with skill. That's really sloppy play from me. Um, up until now, I've probably made the right decisions in the game, but that was a very poor decision. Also, um, there is a tank there which hits me um, um, I put one into him but I know that he has soft cover so therefore his um, he is going to be able to uh, spot me up before I spot him but nonetheless you know a short game but you can see uh, it was a very decent play and um, you know very nice um, bit of damage done yeah, almost 3.3k of damage and um, but we saw there the maneuverability of the tank in action so it is maneuverable, but not um, not um, overly so. So we saw that getting into position at the start, I wasn't, um, you know, in a position where I get an advantage. Uh, you know, the reds had already arrived there. We saw when I'm trying to accelerate up the hills that yes, it gets there. It's not like a heavy tank. Obviously, it is a medium tank, but it you know it slows down significantly going up hills. That's the lower power to weight ratio, and we just saw overall uh, um, a tank in action, which is just an average medium tank not particularly maneuverable and um, you know but maneuverable enough to do its job but now we're going to have a look at gameplay again a supremacy map this one is dead rail and this is the cdc and the cdc we know is should be two and a half times more maneuverable based on our m index which we've looked at so let's have a look at this tank in action and see is it really two and a half times more maneuverable than the um m48 m4a1 so firstly, let's have a look at how this tank gets into a position. So I've checked this setup and I decide that um, given that we're uh, outnumbered at the light tank channel, at the medium tank channel, um, at C, I'm going to go towards B. And you can see how quickly I'm able to get into that position compared to the M4A1. And I get an advantage in that I spot up the enemy and I'm in position to capture B before the enemy knows where I am, before I get spotted. So the first thing we see is the advantage of the power to weight ratio and the maneuverability of this tank um, as we move uh, as we move around the map from, and we, as we move from our spawn position. Um, you know, obviously there's other factors in play, right? This tank has less armor than the M4A1, but in this comparison, we're just looking at the maneuverability of the tank. Now I've captured B, and because this tank is so maneuverable. I actually can go and capture A now. I know where the reds are. I'm looking at the mini map. I've spotted up and um, I've reset my camo and now I can safely move down and capture A. This is something that would not be possible with the uh, M4A1. It's the two and a half times more maneuverability of this tank, which allows me to move around the map um, with much more freedom. Now, one of the things about maneuverability um, is that it allows by allowing you to get around the map and to play on more of the map than you can with a slower tank it means that you can influence the game more that's why you know i've often said on channel before in my opinion light tanks are probably the most influential in the game if you know how to play a light tank well you can influence the game far more than you can with a td or a heavy tank or even a medium tank because you can get around the map much better we see here the maneuverability of the tank when I'm going after the LTTB. There's no way that the M4A1 would be able to chase that um, M4A1. It would have struggled going up the hill um, and would not have been able to make that snapshot onto him. Now I'm back up to my original starting position in B 
um, I'm spotting up the enemy. You can see here the IS is pushing up behind me, so I move around. Again, the maneuverability of this tank, the fact that I know that this has such a strong uh, maneuverability index, means I can confidently go into this position here and know that I can keep myself away from the enemy. So I'm sort of balancing here in between the uh, Dracula and the um, IS. Uh, six which is pushing up on me and um, but you can see here look you know I am able to um, stay out of trouble I've taken a few hits but I'm doing a good job for my team I'm spotting up the enemy and I'm able to clear him off and I'm able to kind of stay out of trouble not completely but just enough to make it very very difficult for the enemy and um, now we can see here again I'm going head on with the Drac. Now we know the Drac is about 30% more maneuverable than me, but um, you know 30% is you know an acceptable difference. If I was in a Helsing, I would be very reluctant to go up against that Drac. Or if I was in the M4A1, because the Drac is going to significantly outmaneuver me. But as I know now, uh, having looked at the M index, that he's only 30% more maneuverable than me. I feel confident that I can go and take him on, especially given that I am higher tier. You know, and having that one to one single figure comparison gives you that sense of confidence and gives you that knowledge about the tank that is not necessarily obvious from just looking at single parameters in isolation. And I think that's why this tool is important and why that's why this tool will help you prepare better when, um, particularly when you are. Uh, 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 going to play a new tank or going back to a tank that you haven't played for a long time. If you were going the other way around, if you played um, this tank consistently and then you were going to think about buying the M4A1, by um, uh, calculating the M index, you would know, okay, well, I'm going to be playing a tank now which is significantly less maneuverable, therefore, I'm going to have to adjust my play accordingly. So, before you even play the tank, before you even hit battle once in it, you know what to expect and can adjust your uh, play accordingly and hopefully avoid mistakes. So, for example, you're not going to try to run away from somebody up a hill and you know, might make a different decision because you know that you're going to lose power going up that hill and maybe get smashed. So all of those things allow you to prepare better and become a better player. So let's have a quick recap on the M-Index maneuverability uh, in general. So, you know, Blitz is a complex game, we know that there are lots of parameters in it, right? Lots and lots of parameters. Just look at Blitzhanger and just look at all the info that's there. But maneuverability is a key factor. But it's also complex, it has a lot of component parts, a lot of parameters that indicate uh, uh, your ability uh, to move. And your maneuverability affects your ability to influence the game. Um, now the M index now provides you with a simple number that allows you to do a like for like comparison between the two different tanks or three or four or whatever. Um, always remember though to use the same setup when comparing the tanks so you have the same apples to apples. Um, and it's perfect for if you're buying a new tank uh, or tanks you haven't played for a while, right? It perfect allows you to assess how maneuverable your new tank is compared to ones you've been playing previously. And therefore you can adapt your play accordingly and therefore improve your play, not make mistakes from the bat. Uh, but I actually know about um, the tank before you roll it out. And combined with other factors like the G index helps you to prepare better. You know, it helps you to understand your tank better and the better you understand your tank, the better you prepare, the better you will play. But guys, it's just a tool. It's not all encompassing or exclusive. You, can, you don't just calculate the M index, say, okay, I've done that now this tank should play perfectly for me. No, it's just a tool. It's a tool in your Blitz toolbox and just use it as such, right? And, um, you know, and combine it with other tools like the G index and other information. So cheers much. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it enjoyable. You may have noticed there is a giveaway code in here. I hope you got it. And I guess now all that remains for me to say is pants off.